Hey guys, it's March 7th, 2018, and this is role play call number 28. For those of you that right. this is your first role play call, and the difference between this and our Thursday mastermind call, we do try to keep everything in the form of a role play. So this isn't really about marketing logistics or problems. It's more about building your sales language, handling objections, sharing language that's been working for you. So if you have questions about mail or phone or you know the marketing aspects, um, please reserve those for our Thursday call. Um, we try to we do this call once a month, so we try to make the most of it. Um, we have one person in the queue. To, if you want to jump in the hot seat, press star six and then one to role play. And again, I'll say this is as much about where you're finding things that are working that you'd like to share with the group as it is, you know, where you're getting shut down. So anything positive or negative, nothing's really off limits. Um, if there's anything you can, you know, you want to cover, please press star six and then one. And as and Jim always says, there's a record r record number of people on here, and actually it's a good, great turnout for role play call. I'm excited. Yeah, and this call will be archived is probably within the hour after we, we finish these calls. They're archived in two different places. If you're a subscriber, the easiest way to find them is go in your top menu, go under uh, conference call, uh, education training, conference calls, and then click call archive. And you'll have all 28 of the role play calls and 160 some mastermind calls. Um, if you're not a subscriber and you're here kind of observing because you're thinking about getting started, be sure and join our Facebook mastermind group. So it's all the leads mastermind on Facebook. And we do also post our calls there. So if you can't get in the subscriber portal, you can still listen to these from the Facebook group. All right. And well, if you're ready to go, we've got somebody sitting patiently waiting. Let's do it. You ready to rock? All right. Caller ending, uh, your phone is ending in the last four digits of 9040. You're up. Go ahead. Nine zero four zero, you are unmuted and able to speak. Where'd you go? Yeah, this is there Bob from uh, from Maryland. I was just hey there. This is the first, this is the first time that uh, I've been at a role play session, and I was just curious as to whether you have had the most success just immediately getting on the phone with a probate. Uh, a, pro a personal representative, or do you uh, recommend uh, sending a letter first? Have you been on any of our other, uh, our regular uh, uh, mastermind calls yet? Is this the first call you've been on at all? This is the first one I've been on, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I, I Chad can certainly answer this, but we have a system that we, uh, you know, we laid out very carefully and we certainly recommend that you send a letter and follow up with a phone call. And Chad, you can certainly take it from there. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. So what we teach, kind of at a minimum, we teach, um, you know, send send a letter and follow the phone call every 30 days. Um, we certainly had prospectors who were eager to get on the phones and jumped on the phones before they sent their letter, and they've they've done well. And we've had people who are scared to death to pick up the phones that just rely on the mail. And we've had people do well there, too. But as far as a best practice, like the, what we teach is send the letter, send three letters and follow each with a phone call is kind of a minimum. The reason we suggest calling following the letter is it kind of warms up your call. It gives you a reason to be following up, right? So, hey, this is Chad. I sent you a letter last week. Just wanted to have a couple minutes at my desk. I wanted to make sure you got it and you understood why we sent it. You remember seeing that? And a lot of times they'll say no or they won't know which letter it was, but it still gives you an easier door into the into the, the conversation. All right. Uh, thank you. And the other thing that you'll find once you've done this is that, as Chad said, they may not remember it, but you can bet when they hang up the phone, if they've talked to you for a couple of seconds, they're going to go back and look for that letter. And that's where you'll get the opportunity to let your letter do the job for you and put all of your great uh, value first leading things in that letter. And, and we'll certainly work with you to get that squared away. But 
You know, it's letters followed by phone calls that seems to work best as a general rule. Okay, folks, we don't have anybody else in the queue right now, so it's star six, press one, and uh you still there, Tim? Six seven four five, caller ending in six seven four five. Chad, can you hear me? I can now, but I, for a moment there I couldn't. Okay, uh, let's try this again. So ending in six seven four five, can you hear me? And if so, can you get on? Ah, uh, yeah, I can hear you. How's it going today? My oh. name is uh, Ryan. And, hey, Ryan. Uh, thank you I, so much, and I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So one of the one of the objections I've been getting held up with on these calls is people saying I'm not sure I'm not I'm not sure what we're doing with it. Okay. So that's, empathy is probably the best tool in in working with these people. Like, let them know that that's okay. That it's actually common. So we'll jump into a role play, but I'll, I'll probably head toward the feel, felt, found. So pay attention to the language I use. I'm going to show you, you know, I understand how you feel. Most of my clients have felt that way. What they found is they actually got a lot of clarity once we started working together, once we met, yada, yada. Okay? Okay. So I'll call you uh, Ring Ring. Hello. Hi, I'm trying to reach Brian. Yeah, this is uh, this is Ryan. Hey, Brad, my name's Chad Corbett. I had sent you a letter last week and I had a couple minutes at my desk. I just wanted to, to follow up, make sure you got it and you understood why we had sent that. You, you remember seeing it? You know, I did. I did get a letter from you, Chad. I'm, I'm pretty sure I did. Yes. Okay. Um, and so, anyways, the reason we reached out, we we built a team of people here locally that help folks in your situation. Uh, we understand how stressful administering a state and being the executor can be. So we try to reach out early. Um, and to do that, we go to the courthouse, we gather records and, and we send letters and then make phone calls just like this one. So what's what's been the toughest thing for you so far? I mean, if there's if there was any one thing you could hand over to me, what would it be? What would be the first thing you, you could get off your plate? Well, I think we're, we're just not really sure as a family what we want to do with the property. Okay. Well, that's really common. I mean, most of the people we speak with, because like because it's early in the process, they're just not sure yet, and they're kind of overwhelmed. And that's really why our service exists. If you can imagine, you know, the probate attorney is going to do the legal aspect, and you're kind of tasked with everything else. And we try to be the bridge between the two of you. So all the things that need to be done, um, we try to fulfill that with, with, you know, with service and solutions. So a lot of times you mentioned real estate. A lot of times that's the first thing the family has to deal with, um, but they don't know how to get the house cleaned out, to get it fixed up. They don't know what it's worth, all those things. So our team consists of uh, everything from property managers to brokerage to contractors, um, clean out crews, uh, you know, you name it, anything that, that you could possibly need, we kind of have on our team. So what we find is usually once we've sat down and kind of we understand the situation, we can provide you some options and some suggestions. And usually it becomes really clear for you from that point. Um, once you kind of understand what you're going to have to go through and, and see how we would suggest you put the pieces together, and a lot of times we take a lot of that off your plate. We can do most of it for you where you don't have to be directly involved. For example, cleaning out the home. We have a team where we can come in, make sure you've got everything, the family has everything they want, and then we can arrange for a sale. After the sale, we can arrange for donations. And after donations, we can arrange for the home to be cleaned out. So even if you're not in town, we can completely clean the house out and get the most amount of money for the personal property, which oftentimes will help us reinvest that to get a higher 
you know, to get more equity out of the real property. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So it usually, I mean, most folks want to start with a face-to-face, and I prefer that too. So, I mean, I've got one spot on Friday at 3. If you're going to meet at the house, that's usually the best place. Like, we can kind of get a, you know, actually see what's what you're dealing with. Would Friday at 3 out there work? Yeah, I could do that. Okay, perfect. And real quick, could you just, so I can do, do my homework, can, can you answer a few questions about the property for me? I sure can. Mm-hmm. And then I'll roll into talking about real estate for the rest of it. Well, the one thing I did skip over, I will I will make sure that all the decision makers can get there. Like I'll ask you if you're the only executor and who you mm-hmm. feel like should be part of the conversation. Then I'll roll to the real estate. Um, I also, if you say, well, you know, let me talk to those other decision makers. A lot of times there, I'll at least set a tentative appointment and then go talk about the real estate and then come back to the appointment and firm it up. And that almost always works. Okay. But focus on the kind of the empathy and letting them know, you know, listen, the reason this service exists is because people feel the way you feel right now. We realize that with, without guidance, you're probably not going to know where to start. You're going to have to fumble your way through this and learn all the hard lessons. But with guidance, we can actually make this extremely efficient and easy for you. Um, it starts with us meeting face to face, so we can show you what that looks like. Can I get you okay, cool. away? Yeah, it does. Thank you very much. Okay, great. All right, that's great. That's super. All right, we'll take the next one in line, and that is a number ending in 8112, and we've got a bunch in the queue, so we'll be looking forward to it. 8112. 8112 are the last four digits. All right. Are you there? 8112, last four digits. All right, we're going to go to the next caller, and we'll come back to you. Uh, this would be Amy, 0313. Amy, can you hear me? I think we're having challenges with the board today. Amy, 830313. Amy Mosley. All right, we'll keep rolling down the board and see if we can get somebody. One one six. No, Amy, you're up now. Do you hear me now, Amy? Yep, I could hear you before. Can you hear me? Oh, weird. We just couldn't hear you. Yes, please go oh, ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, the one that I have gotten is about, you know, we're not ready because um, we haven't even gotten our letters yet. So we're, you know, it's just too soon. We haven't gotten the letters yet. So we want to wait till we get the letters. Okay. So where that would normally come up is when you try to ask for the appointment, right? So we'll just jump in at that point. Okay. If you want. Okay. Well, Amy, listen, it sounds like we could really be a, a, a big help to you guys. Um, I've got a spot on Friday at 3 o'clock. If that works, the kind of first step would be to sit down and just have a discussion about what your goals are. Does that um, work for you? No. Honestly, it's, you know, it's too soon. Um, we don't even. We have not even received the letters yet, so we don't really want to deal with it till we get the letters. Well, I can appreciate that. I mean, a lot of folks feel that way, but mainly because of what the attorney has told them and kind of intimidated them, to, to be frank. But what we find, and, and the attorneys we work with, kind of reinforce this: it, the earlier we can get involved, the, the you know, the more help we can really bring to the table. For instance. You know, we're going to look at the personal property situation, the real property. Um, if there's any anyone that needs, you know, to arrange different living arrangements, things like that. And regardless of where you are in the legal process, if we can, the sooner we get a better understanding of your situation, the sooner we can actually go to work and help make this a little easier for you. Does that make sense? Yeah, but, you know, we just really want to wait till we get the letters and feel like, you know, then the process is really going. But you can call me and, you know, it's probably going to be about maybe three weeks. Okay, so you don't feel like being prepared is, is 
being more prepared than less prepared is, is a good idea? Um, I'd really, I think it's just better to wait and get the letters, and then I know the process is rolling. It just, it's premature right now. Okay. Um, do you do you have an email? Email that you use often? Yes. Blah blah blah. Can I can I get? Okay, got that. Um, what I'm gonna do, and and listen, it's it's you're you're always in control here. I, the only reason I would put pressure on you is because I, it's really uh, hard for me to find situations where waiting is in the family or the estate's best interest. And in and, and our state here in California, you're waiting nine to 12 months. And it's usually not beneficial to the estate or to the, especially to the executor because it just takes longer and longer. So if it's all right with you, I'd like to share a couple of kind of, I guess I'll call them case studies, just experiences where I've, I've helped families in the past and where us moving forward a little quicker actually made their life a little easier. And if you see if you see any value in doing that, then you can give me a call and we'll we'll start from there. Otherwise, I'll follow up with you, you know, let's say in a week or so, and uh, see if you're ready then. Fair enough. Sure, that sounds fine. Okay. And I'll break script. If if you're dead set on just waiting, I'm going to try to show you why it's not in your best interest. And if I have any stories from, even if they're not probate. If, if I have any stories that I can think of in my in my past deals where someone and maybe even where waiting cost somebody money or waiting was a big mistake, um, but preferably where waiting actually not waiting, you know, was a positive thing for them, and just pull a story out and send them an email or pull your phone out and make a video and tell them a story so they can kind of watch it on and digest it on their own time if they're kind of you know if they're stonewalling you to. To, to meet um, that would be my next follow-up and then I would follow that with a phone call I wouldn't wait three weeks um, chances are like in your market three weeks is enough time for somebody to call and get them out of their comfort zone and get them to commit to an appointment so I would find I would have very short follow-up window milestones <clears throat> and find reasons to get back in touch with them and I might even let you go because you you know I, I tried twice and then and you resisted, I'll probably send you that email. Maybe on Friday evening, I'll, I'll give you a phone call and say, Amy, you know what, listen, I'm getting ready to knock off for the week, but I wanted to call you before the weekend because after we talked, I completely forgot to ask you, have you guys changed the insurance over to a vacant house policy? Oh, my God. Well, that's something we should probably do right now. Um, if it's okay, and then I will, I'll get the address over to my insurance agent and get you a vacant, you know, a vacant house policy. I'll say that, listen, I'm going to go ahead and do this for you. Um, and that's just one of the things. I mean, there's a lot of things you don't know yet. And I'm, if, I'm really glad I called because had I not, you would have had an uninsured house for three weeks and anything could happen. Um, it's just one example of, of why we try to, you know, get with folks early, whether regardless of what paperwork has been done, because there's a lot of things that you really aren't thinking about. Would you, would you want to meet up on Monday? I know you said you wanted to wait three weeks, but so just find ways to come back to them with value to kind of reopen the conversation. And that's one that's kind of shocking, but chances are, you know, if they have, if they have real estate and it's just sitting there, probably doesn't have insurance on it. But just find ways to say, oh, you know what? I was thinking after we talked, and let me do this for you and reopen the conversation and maybe do it every couple of days. If you can find reasons to, to reach out to them um, until they finally agree to, to meet with you and let you help them now versus later. Makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Um, let's move to... Last four digits are eight one one two eight one one two. Go ahead. Okay, still having, still having issues there. Let's try one one six nine. I heard some paper. I heard some papers ruffling. Was that you? Hello. Or did we have nope. Second? Oh, somebody's on. Go ahead. Hello. Who we got? Yes, this is Dennis. One one six nine. Go ahead, Dennis. Go ahead. Great, great. Who am I role playing with? Chad. Chad. Chad, Chad thanks for that. Uh, my name is Dennis Autry. I don't have uh, any specific scripts that uh, that y'all use. Um, 
I've been doing some probate work for a while, uh, but not involved with your program. Uh, got this email. I've got a script that I used that I just wanted to run through, get some feedback, if that's okay with you. Sure. So I'll play the PR. You can call me. Fabulous. Fabulous. Ring, ring. <clears throat> Hello, it's Chad. Hey, Chad. Good afternoon. My name is Dennis Autry. I'm a local real estate agent. And the reason I'm calling quickly is I specialize in handling estate properties in our area. And I was curious, <clears throat> curious are you handling the estate of John Doe? I, I am, but, you know, we, we, we've had 15 realtors send us letters and call us. And honestly, uh, Mary from church, I would be devastated if I listed with anybody but her. I can appreciate that. You've got a lot of people calling on you, and it sounds like you know somebody at, at church as well. And, um, you know, the reason that I was calling, Chad, is, you know, I know that as the administrator, it's your fiduciary responsibility to get this property sold and, and net the estate the most amount uh, from the sale. And being someone that specializes in selling these types of properties, I was just calling to see how I can help you with getting this property sold. I, I think we've got it covered. I mean, she's she's been in real estate for 30 years, and she she's got it covered. She'll take care of us. Thanks for your call, though. Sure, not a problem. I can appreciate that. Hey, Chad, let me just ask you real quickly, if you don't mind. And you know, if you are going to get this property sold, would it be worth your time to at least interview a couple of agents, especially an agent like myself that specializes in estate properties, just to make sure that you were getting the property sold and and getting the most amount of money for the estate would that be of benefit to you uh, i mean possibly it's, it's pretty straightforward i mean in this market like all you have to do is put a sign in the yard and the house sells in a day from what i understand so i'm pretty sure mary can can get the most <laughs> wouldn't you think <laughs> you know um Chad, there are a lot of details that need to be uh handled in in selling this type of property and and fortunately, having someone that specializes in estate sales will be happy to coordinate with the um, attorneys to make sure that we've got all of the proper documentation to make sure that there's, there's not any uh, hang-ups at closing. I mean, getting the property sold is one thing, but you also want to make sure you get it to the closing table, correct? For sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I don't mind doing this. I'd be happy to provide you with a current market valuation of what the property would sell for. What would be a good day and time that we could meet at the property? I've got some time available tomorrow afternoon around 4, or would Saturday morning around 10 o'clock be better for you? No, I, uh, I'm camping on the weekends for the rest of my life, so I won't be able to do a Saturday. Um, <laughs> good for you. I, I guess <laughs> possibly tomorrow, but I, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm not, you know, if you want to do that, that, that's great, but I'm probably going to use Mary as my realtor. I don't quite know how to tell her otherwise. Oh, I, I, I totally understand, and, and I can appreciate that. And meeting with me, there's absolutely no cost or no obligation. I would just like to uh, share with you exactly what I do to help administrators like yourself make this process uh, smooth and efficient. So tomorrow at 4 o'clock is good for you? That works. And let's break there before I explode. I want to give you my my feedback. Um, <laughs> if you go back and listen to these calls, you'll hear me, what what I learned, and especially in helping more than in my own business, like helping people in super competitive markets, like in Colorado and California, the quick, like the, the long, try to stay away from the real estate conversation until you've built rapport. So the, the order of what I teach now and what has proven to be really effective, even in working with our ISAs is, Try to stay away from, like, focus on people, situation, then real estate. So you want to, you know, make sure you're speaking with the executor. Help them understand that you have designed a service around people, not a service around real estate and commission checks. Because everyone else, they're getting phone calls. If, if you have competition, it's investors, usually in the mailbox, that are trying to buy the house and, and get a bunch of that equity. They have a pretty one-sided mm -hmm. offer. Most realtors are going to call and go straight for the jugular because they're used to prospecting FISBOs or expired. Then you go, I'm called to talk about the house at 123 Elm Street that you're the, the administrator of. And that really switches people off. You kind of, you're, you're basically getting the reputation of the last guy that pissed them off if you go straight for the real estate. What we found to be way more effective 
is if you can show them from the beginning what the one thing you didn't do you didn't talk about any specifics outside of selling the real estate your service was about selling that real estate if you can draw the camera back a little bit and show them how what a broad scope of service you have so we've actually designed a service around people just in your situation um, now, oftentimes, real estate is one of the biggest things that, that people want to discuss because Americans hold about 80% of their wealth in real estate. So oftentimes, we have to deal with that first before we can help with other things. But our service includes anything from, you know, helping family members get moved into suitable housing or into long, long-term care, all the way to setting up estate plans so you never have to go through this again. It really starts with us understanding your situation and your goals, and then we can kind of give you some options. Does that make sense? So it lengthens no, your no, call. Sandy, you, like, you, have, you have to go a little bit deeper, but you you really can build trust quickly when you're when you're not narrowed in on just I, I'm, I'm I'm a realtor and I'm calling you to talk about that real estate. If you call and you you are a probate specialist or a probate expert and I'm calling to talk about your situation, okay? Are you you're the only executor or who do you feel like should be part of it? So you've got the situation, then the people. Then go for the go for the appointment, and then you've got the rest of your career to talk about real estate. Once you once they trust you enough to meet with you, well, listen. Like I said, one of the one of the first things most families are faced with dealing with is the real estate. So, if you can give me some details on that, let's look at that first. And then when you go, you know, you're going to talk about a variety of different things, um, but you're going to make money off off selling the real estate. But it really differentiates you when you when you offer this big suite of services. Versus just talking yeah, about no, it, what you make money on. Yeah, just it's so just that's, a, that's the just biggest reminds thing. me of the old acronym W I I F M. What's in it for me? Make them uh, uh, show them the value and what you can bring to the transaction. That's outstanding. That's that's right, and it's it's really you basically have no competition when you get that dialed in. So if you have, have you ever listened to these calls before? Uh, no, I have not. Yeah, thanks for stepping up. I'm really glad you did. I, I encourage you to go back and listen to the last three calls have been really good at, at kind of breaking into the initial conversation. They're about an, yeah, 45 absolutely. minutes to I'll an hour each, sure. but you can Like you I said, this, this is different. something where, you know, I, I didn't even know that there was uh, many resources out there for this. So, you know, I just basically have been going blind and put my own script together and kind of been trying to tweak and adjust um, as I go, but um, uh, so I appreciate the opportunity to run this by because that definitely makes a lot of sense, and I can go back and and build on this for sure. Well, yeah. Well, thanks for having the courage to step up and share your script with us. Sure, Chad. Let Absolutely. me ask you thanks a question, and it's really, really to the same kind of point where someone is just they want to wait for Marriott Church or they want to wait for the letters, they want to wait for anything of that. And one of the things I always found helpful in any kind of circumstance like that is to ask them time-based questions indicative of the fact that so what do you think about if you if you were in that same situation they gave you that answer and you said well my issue is I've got a couple of buyers in that market that are anxious to look now when do you think the house in, in your head might be available for sale I don't know is there are there a lot of things that you think are going to need to be done before the house gets sold is there a lot of property that needs to get removed and all that and and if you're asking those kinds of open-ended questions, that also leaves you with the opportunity to bring your value back in. Have you have you considered that, Chad? I'm I'm sorry, Tim. I, it was cutting in and out. I was trying really hard to hear you, but I, for some reason, my phone has cut in and out three or four times while you were saying that. Oh, what I was getting at is that rather than than always moving to the you know, Aunt Mary's going to do a better job, or I'm I'm going to wait for the attorney, wait for the letters. The the fear of the loss of a buyer. You've got people looking now and ask questions about when the house might be available, but ask your questions in such a way that you what you're doing is you're probing out of them the things that literally we all know are stumbling blocks before that house is going to get ready to get sold. One of the biggest problems is often that it's filled with personal property that they're really going to struggle trying to figure out how to get rid of it or the house needs to get cleaned and they don't know how to do that. They don't have a clean out crew. They don't have all that. So if you're asking questions about that as though and because you have buyers in your pocket that are anxious to you know look at property in that area based on what when do you think it might be available and are there things that you know are waiting going to be in the block in the block for getting that done particularly the things that you know you lead with in terms of value isn't that a pretty good way to to probe some of those questions and get the opportunity to lay out your value proposition 
Yeah, I think it is. I mean, you're 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 bringing the outcome, which is money in the bank and a buyer. Um, you're bringing that to the top of the kind of the top of the the conversation. So yeah, I think that's valid. Okay. All right. Well, it's just another option for, and that literally would play in in both of those situations where you're getting a delay. Then you know you're they're already working against the clock. They're they're talking about they're going to delay until something happens, and you let them know that well you're doing that, but you're also delaying it and might not be able to get to the things that I need, which is I got real buyers for you. So that's always a thought to consider. It's that fear of loss that can potentially get you that conversation that you're looking for. Okay, we're ready to take the next caller here. Uh, caller ending in six three two two six three two two. Six three two two. I hear there's noise oh, on your end of the line. Hey there. Oh, hi. Hey, uh, my name is Mary. Um, I just kind of got started with all the leads about a month ago, and I just got my leads. And um, I just sent out my letters on Monday, and I'm just trying to figure out when I should start calling. I don't know if I should so start, what? you know, immediately or should I wait. Until they, so did 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 we send your letters out for you, or did you send them out? I sent them out myself. Okay. Did you send yourself a letter along with them? Um, no, I didn't. Because typically, what we do when when we do the mailings here, we make it a habit of sending a letter out to the customer as well. So when that letter hits your inbox, you know that it's hit the inbox of the people that you're dealing with. And that's okay. a good way to know when the letters have been received. And as soon as they've been received and they've had a chance to get to it, that's generally the time frame that you need to begin making your phone calls because otherwise then your letter gets begins to move towards the bottom of the stack. Yeah. Okay, so about Add three days. So other, it probably should be about today or tomorrow. Because they're all local, so I really don't think it will take that long. Oh, probably not. Most of them, are, not. Most of them are local. I think I had like two that were out of state, so... Yeah, if you dropped them, if you dropped them in your local post office today or yesterday Monday. or Monday, rather, they should should not take more than two days to get out. Okay, good. So, and I'm just like a little bit nervous about making my first call. Like, I don't. I, these people lost someone, I think, like a month ago. So, I don't know if that's too soon. But the filing for probate means they're ready to start moving on. That's not like the person just immediately died. Is that how it is, or? So typically okay. what you're going to find is your date of death is usually about two months from the probate filing. Okay. And that's that's a median. Like some people go immediately and some people wait a year. But on the median oh. number we see is about 60 days. Uh, I think it's 68 is the actual median. So you can figure, you know, they've, they've had to put notice in the newspaper. They had to get in their car, drive all the way to the courthouse, you know, pay for parking, go in, meet with the probate clerk, like, that's they're they're down to the business end of this now so don't feel like you're you know this is something they they have to get done and yeah. no one's like typically they expect a lot more from a probate attorney than they're ever going to get and they have to go they have to come in at some point come into that realization of holy crap i have to do all this on my own so right. I, what i would say like you're it sounds like you're apprehensive because you're not real clear on how like what it is you're providing so yeah. before you jump before you jump on the phones, get real clear on exactly what it why you're doing this and and what your yeah. service is. I think a lot of people the reason they have call reluctance and the reason they get shut down on the phones is they they get excited about this and they jump on the phones before they really have thought through what their offer is. And that's kind of what like the whole the whole session two of probate mastery. We spend an hour just showing you everything you could do. And then you decide what you will do and what you're excited about doing. But I would encourage you to sit down and, and kind of map out what is it that we, we do. So getting homes cleaned out, getting homes fixed up, getting people into nursing homes, helping people with senior moving service to move in with family members, helping people after the settlement to set up probate or set up uh, an estate plan so that future generations don't have to go through probate. Like there's a million and 15 ways you can help these folks just be clear on what those are and yes. you don't necessarily have to have everything in place like i see people a lot of people will not get on the phone because they haven't built out this super you know their dream team you don't really need that you just need to know who you need 
Um, and then once you once when you actually need them, you can you can go find them that day if you really need to. You know, if you really needed a contractor, you could find one today. If you really needed an estate planning attorney, you would have one before sundown. So just be confident that you can provide that service, and then you know put your team together as as you go. But get get clear on your offer and get proud of your offer. Um, yeah. What we find is most people who quit they quit because they weren't they didn't believe in what they were doing. They, you know, they they and people feel that on the phones and your letters like it's just it's in your energy. Like if you're sincere yeah. and you're coming at this with a servant's heart, they know it. And, the, you know, conversely, they know if, if you're just trying to chase commission checks. So I'm, I'm pretty sure you did this for the right reason. Just kind of get that, yeah. like, get that organized in your mind. And that call reluctance should go away for you. Okay, that's 100% what it was, too. I was just like, yeah, I don't know if I have my team all together and all this. So that's true, though. I can definitely find those people right away. I know a lot of people in the area that probably know those people as well. So yeah. I just have to get over yeah. that. And so can I, I just call any time of day, huh? Just try to try, – I know you said before – that you know, there's a, a those few specific times. I'm sure that doesn't even really make that much of a difference. It makes a, right? it's you're 164 percent more likely mm -hmm. to convert during those times statistically. Oh wow. Um, okay. If, if you can if you can make them work. So, so you it, said eight to ten and four to six, right? Yep. On Tuesdays and. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Well yep. then. Today's Wednesday, so I'm going to go get started at 4 o'clock. I'm just going to give it a shot. Well, between now and then, if you haven't done this, go back and listen to the last couple of role play calls. There's every one of these calls has like not you know gold nuggets in it. There's you you'll you'll start to pick up on oh I can do that there. Oh I could offer that as my service. Like even though we're we're role playing, you'll still hear ideas like examples of oh well, we can do X Y and Z, and that'll kind of give you it'll help you you know, craft your offer in your head so you know. And then the whole idea here is to become a transaction engineer like on the fly or a solutions engineer on the fly. So when they tell me a problem, I tell them a solution. When they give me three more, I give them a simple solution for those three. And when you can do that, it's actually, it's actually pretty exciting to make these calls because you're like, I can help anyone, right? Like when you know yeah. that, like you, you're going to be really confident. And that comes yeah. quick. Like it I probably I probably fell on my face a dozen times and wasn't clear on what I was offering and had marble mouth. But, you know, after maybe a dozen calls, I got really clear on what I was doing and pretty excited because I had early, I had success and I saw how it could work and I saw the gratitude from that just pour out of that woman. And that really start, kept me, kept driving me. And then as those clients, you know, as that kind of continued, it just kept pushing me even more until I was just excited about what I was doing. Like, I couldn't wait. I'm like, ha, nothing you can say. You're like, I've got an answer for everything. Like, I've got a solution for anything you could be going through. And when you get to that level of excitement, this is it's the best business you'll ever have. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, well, I'm definitely oh, looking forward to that. All uh, right, guys, well, I'll let you get, get to on, everybody get else. Thank you so much. Get on the phone All at right. 4 and then come come back tomorrow at 1 p.m. and tell us how it went. I will. I'll, I'll accept that challenge. I'll do this. All right. I'll <laughs> talk to you guys tomorrow. All right. Good luck. All okay. Right. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for the call. Appreciate you being here. All right. Next up, we have caller ending in 2019. 2019. Yes. This is Lola Carey in uh DFW, Texas. I am. Thanks I have for... two questions. Oh, go on. <laughs> no, go right ahead. Okay, I have two questions, and I know I should just look on the website, but I'm trying to keep myself from wasting time looking. Uh, do y'all have like a vendor list on the website on the portal for us to go to for us? Like the people who will clean out the house for probate. The people who will do the estate sale do y'all have like a list of vendors or is that something we, we need to have um, on our own 
We serve over 3,000 counties, so it would be hard. I mean, it would be a full-time job to run a directory like that. So, okay. um, we we in, in the fast track training, we we you know I, I spend a few minutes on how you can build your team and probate mastery. We spend a considerable amount of time showing you exactly how to get those. Um, you know, if you need there, there's and, and on these calls, you can if you go to the the Facebook group on the call archives. You can search back through and we summarize each call so you can see when we talked about building your team, you can kind of look through okay. the, the, you know, the paragraph or two above it. Um, the, the few you mentioned, like finding an estate sale company, there's, there are multiple directories just for that. So there's estatesales.net, estatesales.org, and estatesales.com. I know those three, two of them merged, but there's a couple of directories with over 20,000 estate sale companies. And that's where most people start. You can find, you can usually find somebody in your market that's, you know, would be a good partner. Um, oh, okay. Finding clean out crews. My trick for a clean out crew is go find the best, you know, the REO agent in your market that's doing HUD or Fannie Mae deals. And they probably uh -huh. have multiple multiple clean out crews that have that are insured and have been vetted by the by the lender. So you can you can get a certain level of, of you know reliability when you work with those that you know that agents have they're they're you're used to working with agents and they're used to, you know, and they've they've kind of proofed up for a bank, so they're pretty trustworthy. But there there's you know, you, you never stop building your team. I mean there's you could have dozens and dozens of people, you know nursing home employees, senior moving companies, um, estate planning attorneys, family law, family law attorneys, uh, CPAs, financial advisors. There's tons, just try to think about, you know, what can, what, what could they, these people possibly be going through and who could, who in my network could help them. And then when you kind of identify that, that you know, you can probably find just about everything on a Google search um, or talking to people in your office. So. Okay. Okay, then the second question I had was, uh, I already have, uh, I think, two letters that has been sent out already, and I decided that now I want you all to do the calls instead of me. I was that person last week that said that. I sent an email asking, because when I went in there and tried to set up the calls, it was having me to start the whole process over again, and I only need to just set up the calls part, but this, no one has responded. Yeah, there's three buttons. There's a button for just calls, one for just letters, and one for letters and calls. Um, okay. We can, we can have somebody reach out to you this afternoon. Um, what was What was your name? Lola, L-O-L-A, -L -A, and that's L as in Larry, O as in Oliver. L is in Lucy, A is in Apple. Last name is Carrie, C is in Cat, A is in Apple, R is in Rooster, E is in Elephant, Y is in Yahoo. Okay. All right. We'll make sure we get somebody back to you this afternoon. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Very good. I appreciate that. we got a little more time left. We've got at least one more person in the queue, and there's one that I haven't been able to kind of raise up yet, so we'll hopefully get him as well. So we may have one or two left. Uh, right now we're going to go to caller ending in 6, nine, I'm sorry, 6894. Adam? See, I'm glad, I'm glad I did ask because they don't have it on his website. <laughs> Adam, 6894, are you there? All right, we'll try a different one. Call in the or last phone number, phone number ending in eight one one two eight one one two. Eight one one two. I know, no kidding. I think so as well. I'm this technology is way above my head here. I can't click these buttons. <laughs> Six eight nine four or eight one one two. You're both unmuted. Chad, I think you may be home free, bud. Folks, star six one. If you if you have a question and you'd like to get in the queue, we'll take we'll take another call. But right now uh, we're kind of sitting here waiting on you guys. 
All right, I'm going to try one more time here. Okay. Hello? 6894. There you there go. Are. Now you're on. All right. Yeah, for some reason you guys couldn't hear me. Um, hey, this is Adam Kuchuk. I'm down in Southern California. So um, I actually have a question from Marcus Hines up in Northern California. He just couldn't be on the call today. Um, he sent me a text. He, he, his question was, how do we find an attorney who created a trust but is now out of business when our client cannot find the entire trust but they know the attorney name? Do you guys have an angle for that? Has to have been filed. I'm going to so assume it has. My first, my first thought is when an attorney deactivates their license, do they have to notify the bar? Of their current, of, of like their current information, it seems to me that because they have such sensitive legal files, they would still have to. The state would still want to know how to have access to them, right? So I wonder yeah, if I, you could call the bar, call the bar association, and say, you know, listen, I have a client who needs access to a file from this retired attorney. Do you have information on file for him? The other thing that the attorney, the, the current, I'm assuming the, the state potentially has another attorney that they've engaged in regard to the process, and that attorney should have the ability to do a judicial search, a judicial record search, and potentially pull the original trust out if, in fact, it had been filed with the court as a document. Okay. So it could That's conceivably or should be in the court records for the county in which it was filed, and a judicial record search by the other attorney can pull that. Judicial record search, okay. Okay. Sounds good. Well, that's all I and have. Otherwise, question for otherwise, Marcus. you um, you may just try Spokio or Intellius and try to find that attorney by name and and what town he used to have an office in. What was the other one? Spokio and what? Spokio or Intellius. I N T E L I U S, and you can do a people search there, and and maybe skip trace him and find him or her. The other thing that's often common is that when an attorney drops practice and and they it doesn't happen because of death, they they will potentially sell that practice, and those files get moved to another attorney. So if it was a family law attorney, depending on the size of the community and all the rest of that. I, fr quite frankly, there may be other attorneys that are in that same uh, practice of law in that market who may have great information about that person. And your last resort is also simply, you know, if you're desperate to find them and at least find out circumstances, uh, hire, hire a private investigator to go find the attorney. If they can't turn them up, then your attorney is probably going to tell you that, you know, you may have to do, I, I don't know what they call it in California, but in, in a state that I'm familiar with, it's called a proof filing. And what you're doing is you're filing a, a claim as to what you believe the, the actual trust to be and all of that, and uh, it causes the holders of the trust to, uh, if, they, if there are copies, you're giving a particular length of time that those are, those are required to come forth. Otherwise, new documents can get created, but there's a, an advertising process that has to be done to make that happen. But all those, I'm, we're not giving you legal advice. That's what the attorney is for. Sure, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Well, good suggestions. I appreciate it. I'll definitely pass that on to him. All right. Thank you. Good enough. We're going to take one more try at caller ending in 8112. 8112. Hey, Hello. gotcha. All right, go ahead. Every time you guys uh, gave me the cue, I could hear you, but you guys couldn't hear me for whatever reason. We were just testing your will to, to be heard, and you, you were strong-willed. <laughs> Glad we got you, bud. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, how you doing, though? This is uh, Malik in New Jersey. Um, Good. I guess my question uh, to, to Chad is uh, I recently had a call from, you know, a, a, um, an executor or administrator to an estate. Um, talked to him for a while, more so trying to figure out, you know, um, what he wanted to do, where, you know, where where he was looking to go as far as uh, the property and what he wanted to do with it. Um, he, he was able to, you know, we talked for a while. He gave me a lot of information. And then he 
really couldn't make up his mind at the time, and all I wanted to do was just see the property. Um, and then he called me back because he canceled like two times on me for me to, to come out and see the property. And then he said he spoke with his brother. His brother was in another state, but he was handling the estate. Um, and that, on that note, because what wind up happened is he, I just followed up with him, and he wind up listing it with a realtor. Um, but he did say that he was, they were trying to get as much money as possible because the house. Are you in, approaching uh, this as an, an investor? As an investor. Real- yeah. Yeah. I'm an investor in New Jersey. And this is what I focus on primarily. It's probate. Yeah. So he he actually set the appointment with you and then called you to cancel before it. Yeah. He, he called me like the day before. Okay. Um, the and first did you speak time, with him, or did, it, did he leave you a voicemail? No, no. I actually follow, um, I spoke with him, and he said he had uh, he had talked with his brother, and um, the father had like sixty, about sixty thousand in debt that was left. Um, the father actually bought the house. And only paid off forty thousand of it. He bought it for three forty. He paid off forty thousand. There was a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage that hasn't been paid since April of last year. Um, I did some research, even with my uh, my realtor, and the property is worth five hundred and seventy six thousand. Um, so you know he was giving me what the mortgage amount payments was and everything. So he gave me that information, and then when he tallied it up. I said, well, if you haven't paid since April, you're probably about three hundred and fifteen thousand on top of that, you know, uh, sixty thousand that 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 your father owes. So his thing was though, they were there if they can, they're they're going to try to get more than fifty thousand a piece, basically, for the property. And there's two of them. It's two of them. Um. But the last time when I spoke to him and he canceled on, he was saying that he wasn't quite sure, but then they wind up going. Because I just followed up with him uh, Monday, yesterday, and he was saying that they just, uh, well, today is Wednesday, so Monday. He's, he was saying that they they decided to go with a local realtor for now. Um, and that if it doesn't sell with the realtor, you know, within that 17 to 100 days, he definitely was going to call me back. And, okay. But he was kind of well, happy that, you know, that I called him back, I guess, to check and see which way he wanted to go. Was he still leaning towards the uh, the realtor or not? Yeah. So I think, I mean, other than tracking this one, and, and well, I mean, you might want to put an offer in anyways. Um and just, I mean, as an investor, you're not trying to get a commission, so it doesn't matter if it's listed or not, right? If he right, wants right. to pay, if he wants to pay twenty thousand dollars in commissions, then okay. But my offer is the same, and you may just write him a personal letter and you know send the offer. And I would, I would write a personal letter and put uh, buyer signature, seller signature, and present uh-huh. it with the offer. I used to do that because listing agents like my message would never get through to the seller. So Uh I actually would, I would write a letter and just make it look formal at the bottom. I would put signature and date. So Mm -hmm. it would get presented and and they still don't have to present it, but nine out of 10 listing agents will present your, your cover letter with the offer. If you just put the signatures at the bottom, because they're, you know, we're so conditioned. It's like, Oh, well, that needs to be signed. I guess I have to throw it in there. I have to present it. So it'll give you a chance to say, hey, listen, um, you know, I I just wanted to go ahead and and give you this offer. If you notice, there's, you know, the termination date is 180 days from now. Um, Just, you know, just let let me know if if, if we can put this deal together and just leave it an open-ended offer with contingencies in it. Um, That way he at least remembers who you are. He's at least gotten an offer and you you did what you said you were going to do. You made him an offer. Um, and then just keep keep track of it. But I, I think the more important thing here is, is let's get the lesson out of this. Like, where did you drop the, where did you open the crack 
where did you let the opportunity open up for the realtor to get in there um before That's you why I wasn't really offer? sure because I was I wasn't talking price I was talking the benefits of you know mm-hmm. how I could but say what, prob- what probably what probably would happen is a, a realtor made contact with him and he said, uh-huh. well, you know, listen, investors make their business by taking your equity. So I can show you how to sell for more money. Even with my commission, I can still show you how this, you guys can get more money and get closer to that $50,000 each. Could we meet up tomorrow? No, no, they well, wanted more. He was, they, he said they were looking because I was, I was asking him, you know, I asked him, I said, well, because I did, when I did the numbers, I was like, well, if I offered them about 450 or 4, 470, you know, that's at least about 100000 or so they would be able to, you know, for them to walk away with after all everything is paid. Um, but, you know, he just, at the time he said he wasn't sure he had to, th- you know, I guess think about it a little, little more. So, you know, I, that's why I was trying to figure out because I'm like, I'm, I'm telling, you know, I'm, I was informing him how it would be beneficial for him to work with me versus, you know, having to go with someone else. Um, because yeah. he, and they, they had the like, letter I mean, for a their, while. Their biggest concern was netting as much money as possible. And as yes. investors, it, it, you're all you're going to get very few of those. Um, you know, we we always tell people like investors and realtors aren't really competition, because it's amazing to me the guy that will sell a house for fifty cents on the dollar will never call a realtor. And the one who who needs to net the absolute absolute most will tell you that every investor in town is a damn crook, and it's just I've I've done hundreds and hundreds of deals and wholesales and 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 you know just conventional deals, and uh-huh. they're two very two very distinct sellers. Um, so I think what you lost this just because he was the guy that wanted to net the most, and you probably never would have been able to buy that house at the price you wanted anyways. So I, the. You, you can, you know, the the person who is going to be highly motivated to sell probably is never going to call the realtor, much less, you know, call one and then stand you up on your appointment. Um, but I think what you can learn from this is you, you can say, okay, well, you know, remember what happened last time. A realtor got there before I did, before I could get my offer in. So the next time you're in this situation, find a reason to get in front of them quicker um, and say, well, you know, listen, we, we, we know that that's, Oftentimes people want to get offers quickly. So is there any way that I could get access to the house and then you and I could talk tomorrow and, and I can, can get an offer to you and try to get your offer in there a little bit sooner. But the good news is like, like with realtors, you know, when we get beat to a listing, we're beat for the term of the listing. You're an investor. You can make your offer anytime you want for any amount you want. So Right. I think your best your best play here on this house is write a cover letter, put a sig- put signature boxes at the bottom mm-hmm. so you know it gets presented, and ship it off to the listing agent, and see what happens. You still okay. get to make your offer. All right, I, I can I can do that then. Um, okay. okay. Yeah, not a problem. This is this all right, is Molly. Good. This is Does that get you squared away? Uh yeah yeah because I had um it was another another um offer too but the guy he agreed to the offer price and then he turned around and went with someone else uh for like yeah. five thousand more I mean, I than what I was asking so and always the key to things it. like this is to, always the key in any circumstance like this in your circumstance more than anybody else and if you're trying to buy that property. And you want to try to get to it, you've got to be able to make sure that you have a reason to get that offer in and, you know, get something going. So that compelling reason to do it based on time, I'm looking to do something quickly and make a move in this market. You at least should want to at least hear what my offer might be. And uh, lots of reasons to do that. You have nothing to lose. The, the, they had nothing to lose by agreeing to at least accept an offer on the property. Nothing binding about that. Right, right. Okay. Folks, it's right. it's uh, after three. We've been at this about an hour. Um, appreciate you all being here. Great answers, great questions. As always, we enjoy doing this. Uh, Jim is not here to make the standard uh, closing remark speech, but Chad does it almost as well. Chad, would you like to do the Jim Sullivan Memorial speech? 
I always like to say, take one thing you heard here today, one thing that inspired you, that, that woke you up, get off the phone, go put it into action, and come back tomorrow to tell us how it worked with our 1 o'clock mastermind call. Something like that. Wow, you did that really Good well. Point. That was great. Yes, Folks, sir. thanks for being yeah. here today. We appreciate it. You all have a great day. And do come back tomorrow and uh, join us on the mastermind call. Talk Will to you do. then. Thank you so much.